uh, cereal companies considering different types of packaging. This thing called great taste. What's the volume of the package that would hold this, the greater amount of cereal? Okay, so we just need these two volumes. This, this volume's uh, uh, base times width times height. So that's going to be uh, 12 times 5 times 18. That's 60 times 18. And so let's do that. 60 times 18. So the volume of this guy is going to be 1080. And look, that's even one of the answers, but we're not done yet. And this guy right here, if this diameter is 10, the radius is 5, right, from here to here. And the volume for a cylinder is well, any, any um, prism is you do the area of the base times the height. And the area of this base is pi r squared because it's a circle times the height. So let's just put in what we know. We know this is 5 squared times pi times the height, which is 18. So that's 25 times 18 times pi. And let's see, is there a fast way we can do this? I mean, there, there is fast ways to do it. This is um, 450 times pi. And uh, so this is 3 times 3.14 times 450, which is going to be something like this one here. It's going to be 1,413 cubic centimeters. So and when we just check this, really the answer question is, what's the volume of the package that would hold the greater amount of cereal? And it's going to be that. You plug it into your calculator. Let's see, let's find the next one. Oh, this will die down here. 44. Wanda filled the fish tank with water. Okay, good for you, Wanda. Let's see. Filled the fish tank with water until the water level reached four inches. Then she added rocks to the tank and the water rose to seven inches. The tank's a rectangular prism with base measuring 14 by 24. If Wanda added 85 rocks to the tank, what was the average volume of one of the rocks? All right, so this is going to be several steps. Um, so if we draw this out, here we have the base of our tank. And we have the dimensions right here of the bottom of the tank, 14 by 24. So I'm going to write that 14 by 24. And she filled it up 7 inches deep. There's 7 inches deep. Green water. Yeah. And so let me write a 7 right there. So what was the... Um, What was the volume of the tank before she added the rocks? And then, or, you know, what's the volume and then what's with the rocks? And we're going to take the difference between those two. So the volume here would be straightforward 24 times 14 times 7. Then with the rock, with the, with the, um, oh, I'm sorry, I messed that up. It was four inches when she put the water in it first. All right, okay, so this would be, right, so this is the four inches. Then it rose to seven inches. So how much did it go up? Um, well, so here's the old, here's the old volume. See that VO. And the new volume is, is going to be 24, right, because it went up, to, then it went up to seven inches times 14 times seven. I don't want to rush to my calculator yet because there might be some cancellation, and I would hate to do uh, I would hate to do more calculations than I have to. So what's the, then we would take the difference between these two um, to see how much these 85 rocks added. So we take this, do that minus that. Um, we're going to get a number here, and then divide by 85. But I want to just do um, 
if, if, if you can do that, I mean, it's just, just it's, there's a lot of work, but I want to, I want to try to um, do this with algebra so that it makes it really easy. So I'm going to write this down as um, the, the new volume minus the old volume, 24 times 14 times 7, right? What we're going to do in our calculator, we're going to subtract 24 times 14 times 4, right? That's exactly what we're going to do. And then we were going to divide that by 85, and that would give us our, our, our per rock volume, right? 85 rocks over this much increase in volume. Well, let's try this. Let's factor out a common factor here. You see this common factor, 24 times 14. Watch this, 24 times 14. We factored it out of here, so we're left with 7. And we have minus 4. And all this is going to be over 85. I'm still not rushing to my calculator. Well, 7 minus 4 is 3. So equals 24 times 14 times 3. I just replace, replace 7 minus 4 with 3 over 85. Now, are there any factors in common? Um, 5 goes into 85. 5 goes into 85 17 times. Hmm. Well, we saved some calculations, I guess. And we could probably do this in our head, uh, but just to be, just to be perfectly uh, 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 right. Let's do it uh, on the calculator. 24 times 14 times 3 divided by 85. 11.86 or 11.9 is good enough. All right. Let's go back to this here. Find the volume. We'll grab all these problems. Hope you're still with me. Find the volume of the hemisphere. So this is half of a sphere. Use this for pi. Okay, well, our volume for sphere volume of a sphere, all we need is the radius. It's 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, that's the sphere, but we really want to do one half of this. So um, let's say the volume of the hemisphere is equal to one half. And I'm just going to rewrite that, 4 thirds. times pi. And now I'm going to put in an in, in r for the six and a half for r cubed. Now before we rush to our calculator, let's cancel that two with that four, and that leaves two. So we want two thirds of pi times six point three cubed. Again we could um, we could do a pretty good estimate in our head and, and find the right one, but uh, we will. I will run to my calculator this time. So 6.5. Oops. 6.5 times 6.5 times 6.5 times 3.14 times 2 divided by 3. 574. Oh, good. The sphere has a volume 